Hey everybody, I got a question about the supplements that I take and I also got a question about brain health, brain aging as it relates to dementia and Alzheimer's as we get older and I promise I will address that at the end of this in a little more detail than I did with the person via text. So first, what are the supplements I take? Well, you'll be surprised, but almost all of the supplements that I actually carry in the gym. The difference is, is when I take them. And that's why um, in the seminars, I go into elaborate detail about not just what supplements are for who, but also when and why. But let's start off with uh, digestive enzymes, which I take. And again, how, how I use those and, and how much I use and when is a longer discussion. Um, glycine and taurine I take. Those are both um, amino acids. Again, when I take them and why I take them and on what days I take them also matter. Similarly, Curapro, again, not to beat the dead horse here, but you're going to keep hearing this. When, when I take it, why I take it, with what do I take it with. D3, and I also take beta carotene for reasons that uh, I've shared in past seminars um, with the beta carotene. Vitamin C, I will take, again, on certain days, certain times, in a certain way. Fish oil. Um, any of the fish oils that we carry at the gym are fine. But what else do I do? I also vary my fibers. Here's a gluten-free fiber that I can bake with. Another gluten-free fiber, brown rice flour that I can bake with. Almond flour that I can bake with. Millet flour that I can bake with. Oat flour that I can bake with. Hold on. Hemp protein that I can use. Beet powder root that I can use. Ashwagandha root. Fl brown flax seed. Hemp. Hemp hearts. Cacao nibs. Maca root. Moringa powder. Spirulina. Whoa. A lot of stuff. I mean, that's just some of the stuff from my kitchen. But um, you'll notice that all of it is organic and it's all different forms of fiber. And do I have each thing and like, do I just make something with almond flour? No, I combine all of the different flours. I have my own way of doing different things. And uh, again, I share this information freely with all of you guys um, in seminars, how I kind of mix this stuff up and the timing and whatnot, because it does matter. It does matter. You know, what, what affects different amino acids, different vitamins, fat soluble, water soluble, they have different effects on the body at different times, depending on your male, female, did you train? Did you not train? Is it nighttime? Is it daytime? Should you have it with food? Should you not have it with food? You get the point. Come on now. All right. So, well, you get the point, but do you know? That's the difference. You get the point that I'm making, but do you know the answer? My guess is most of you don't. All right, now, the question is, what can we do for brain health? What do we know? I'm going to just start off with the text that I read the person, excuse me, that I wrote to the person. I tried to make it um, short, but I'm going to elaborate on it a little bit more. Um, and the reason why is because this person's parents are, is hurting, uh, suffering, one from Alzheimer's, the other one from dementia. So we can have a longer discussion if, if you want, but in general, if targeting brain health, the obvious things would be stress management, don't do things that could cause head trauma, don't drink too much or drink too often, get at least seven and a half hours of sleep each night. Now, that right there is a mouthful. The seven and a half hours of sleep, the not getting head trauma, the not drinking too much alcohol or any other quote unquote recreational drug, not getting too much or probably avoiding it altogether is a good idea. Stress management, all that stuff is its own book, everybody, um, including sleep quite literally on brain health. But then I went on and said supplements would be fish oil, magnesium. There are specific forms of magnesium that maybe we could talk about another time. Um, phosphatidylcholine, which I talked to him about in the past and I've talked about in seminars about why that would be. And then I said we can talk more privately about um, things that we know that could increase 
brain health. And some of those things would be things like meditation, perhaps uh, red light therapy, far infrared, far infrared near infrared, um, hot saunas and cold exposures. Again, it depends on the person and where they are and what they're doing, but it also depends a lot on their genetics. And the big thing here is that we know that APOE4, APOE4 is the gene that is most, um, it is most predictive of Alzheimer's and also certain uh, um, heart disease risks. Uh, it is a good idea to know if you, if you have one or two alleles of APOE4. And I have had conversations with people about this. We also know that things like drinking two cups of coffee a day is, seems to be very protective against um, the early onset of Alzheimer's. And we can talk about why that would be. But the bottom line is, is that we do know things. We know a lot of things now. We have the technology. The time to protect your brain isn't at 70. It's now. It's making sure you get enough sleep because those beta amyloid plaques we know are implicated in, um, in most brain-related diseases. And sleeping uh, enough certainly um, has been shown to help get those beta amyloid plaques out of their brain. But by what other mechanisms? Well, these are all the nutritional factors that we're talking about and have been talking about. And, uh, and increasing blood flow, you know, exercise. These things are hugely important. Um, well, it's just a, about a seven minute video. I try not to go much more than that, but again, we are doing an entire seminar on brain health and breathing soon, breathing, 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 everybody. There has been no one topic that we've run more than breathing in the past in the gym, because it might be the most underappreciated thing that you can do for your health because you take tens of thousands of breaths every single day. You take hundreds of thousands every month. So everybody, it's important to know how to breathe, not just for, not just for performance, but for your health. If you're a mouth breather, if you sleep with your mouth open, it's a big deal. So that in itself, um, we'll talk about all those things and what it means. All right? All right, everybody. Have a great rest of the day.